What's up guys? Today we're back at it with another training video, uh, specifically talking about the mistakes I made when I started training uh, five and a half to six years ago. I'm gonna go over pretty much the mistakes I made and the mistakes I see people make. So I think we're gonna go through about five crucial points that are necessary to pretty much building a good physique. So let's get started. So the first issue is doing the exercises properly. So exercise execution. So people tend to, and I, by the way, I'm included in this. When I started training, people tend to just jump straight into training not having enough knowledge about how to pretty much execute an exercise properly. And that could lead to many different issues. So the first issue is basically not targeting the desired muscle group. So for example, let's say I'm doing a flat dumbbell press. The goal is to engage the chest as much as possible. So when I see people do a flat dumbbell press, me included, when I started, I used to put too much emphasis on the shoulders, try to lock out my triceps as much as I can, and I pretty much had my shoulders creep in, which, you know, neglected a lot of chest activation, which wasn't what I wanted to do. And I kept on asking myself, why is my chest not growing after you know, training chest two to three times a week, I was like, okay, something is clearly wrong. I'm doing something wrong. I'm either, you know, not executing the exercise right, or maybe I'm not doing enough volume. And it turns out that when I changed the way I was executing the exercise, it changed the whole lot because I'm able to put the emphasis on the muscle I actually want to put on that muscle. So, Practicing exercise execution will allow you to perfect the art, pretty much, of engaging the muscle you want to engage. So, make sure you spend enough time trying to perfect your form so that you can master the art of pretty much placing the tension on where you want to place it in the first place. So, that's point number one. Point number two is follow a specific program. I see a lot of people, and I've mentioned this multiple times, they go to the gym and they wing it. They're like, okay, one day I'm just gonna do, you know, chest and biceps. And then, you know, the following week they won't follow that. They'll just do something else like chest and triceps or chest and shoulders, whatever it might be. So the point, the moral, of the point is if you're not consistent with the same program, right? Whether it's, you know, it comes down to the exercises or the days, you know, it depends on the way your split is set up to begin with. Let's say I'm doing, I'll give you an example. Let's say I'm doing a push-pull leg split. I want to stay consistent with that push-pull leg split. On top of that, you need to stay consistent with the exercises you're doing in that split. That way you could actually see progression over a prolonged period of time. So that prolonged period of time can be anywhere from five to eight weeks, for example. So you want to repeat these exercises for over a couple of weeks before you say, okay, let me go change it up into something else. And if something is working for you, don't just change it right away. Um, what I would do is after a five to eight week split, if you know you get to the end and you're like, okay, this is working for me still, and you still want to continue with that split, what I would do is I would just pull back the volume, right? So that would be, you know, getting rid of some of the volume, uh, you know, getting rid of some of the sets, the excessive reps, get rid of the drop sets, stuff like that. Start back from 
start back to week one's volume and you know you could repeat that cycle over and over pretty much if you enjoy the exercises so you know but this is going to lead into my next point there is a counterpart to that which is i wouldn't repeat the same program over and over and there is a couple reasons why i wouldn't do that the first reason is because of simply just boredom if you keep on doing the same thing over and over simply you're not going to stay consistent with it because it gets monotonous and it's just it's hard to stay consistent with just doing the same thing excessively over and over and over so a bit of diversity in your training routine will help you know uh with the boredom pretty much you know you don't you won't feel as bored when you change up the routine so that's that's a downside of sticking to the same split over and over the other downside of sticking to the same split is if i don't change the exercise selection right how am i going to target different muscle fibers so for example let's say i have an arm day in my session right i do for you know, for five to six or five to eight weeks, I do these selected uh, arm exercises, right? I'll give you a few examples. I'll do one of the supersets would be a straight bar curl supersetted with skull crushers. Okay, you do that for a prolonged period of time. After that, you want to, you know, because you've targeted you've targeted these muscle fibers already right so you want to make sure you're not leaving out any other muscle fibers so you could actually maximize size on your arms so the question is okay what do you do then you change the exercises up so you could change the angle of your torso to ensure that you could actually you know put emphasis on uh different parts of the movement such as the lengthened part or the shortened part of the rep uh you know and also just changing the angle of the exercise will allow you to you know fight you know a different strength curve which is the goal so that way you're allowed you're allowing yourself to you know target different areas in your muscle which is the goal the goal is to pretty much target all the areas in your body that you could actually physically uh, target. So just changing up the exercises is good for that reason. And also changing up the exercises is also good because if you're doing a straight bar curl every time, right, you're putting too much stress on your elbows. A lot of people, because it's not natural to do a straight bar curl just the way, um, just mechanically the way your body's put together it's just unnatural right your wrists are kind of uh turned in in a sense so changing it up to an easy bar would be helpful so that you could um relieve some of your joints from that stress and you know long term it will help you out a lot so there is a lot of reasons to change up the exercises pretty much and just to change up your split in general. Another mistake I made when I was training was not resting enough. So when I started training, I was going three times a week, then I changed it to four times a week, five times a week, and then six times a week. And then during those six times a week, I would be doing six weightlifting sessions, and then I would do probably maybe four cardio sessions low intensity but it was four it, you know i would actually say it was moderate intensity rather than low intensity so what happened was i was really breaking down my body and i wasn't giving my body a chance to actually recover so i found out long term that doing more didn't necessarily mean i was gaining more doing more was actually more harmful to my physique because I realized okay I'm starting to downsize 
I feel weak, I feel ill. I just didn't feel good overall. And also just, I had a routine that was super, uh, just unsustainable, which didn't help, you know, it didn't help me stay consistent with it. So I learned that over time to incorporate more rest days and recovery days throughout my routine. That way I could actually recover and use the rest that I need to build up the muscle that I broke down in in the gym, which is the goal. I, my goal is to maximize as much muscle as I can on my body, pretty much. So, you know, doing the recovery stuff really helped me uh, maximize size more. I realized over time I got bigger. And I always went by that philosophy, more is less and less is more. It's as simple as that. Obviously, you take that with a grain of salt, but it still applies to training. And doing more, like I said, is not, it's not gonna do anything. You know, how much, even let's say you do more, there's only so much you could do, right? You, there's only so much you could take the volume to. So make sure you're always cycling through the volume because too much volume is not good. It's simply counterproductive to you actually getting bigger. So that leads me on to my next point. And the one mistake that always, always, always got me was just, I mentioned resting. The one mistake that really got me was, the one mistake that really got me was just sticking to my comfort zone in a sense. So I wasn't pushing to failure sometimes, right? And that was counterproductive because it wasn't necessarily counterproductive because I was able to maintain the muscle mass I wanted to make, you know, I, I was maintaining. I wanted to build, but I was maintaining. I was satisfied, but I realized, okay, I'm not building muscle anymore, right? I'm just going through the motions. I'm not pushing to failure. And when I realized I wasn't pushing to failure, I wasn't training with enough intensity. I wasn't growing at the same time. So make sure you're training with intensity. Try to make your sets as intense as possible. Right? That's why when you train intense for a couple of weeks, five weeks, let's say, you have a deload week. You know, you you give your body pretty much rest. And you know, you have to give the muscle a reason to grow, whether it's applying more weight to it, applying more reps, applying a certain tempo, whatever it might be, it has to be done with intensity in order for the muscle to actually react to the work that's being done on it so make sure you're pushing with intensity and of course take the rest time you need i would rather you have three intense sessions through the week than six average sessions just not pushing with intensity because it, it's not going to get you anywhere it's not going to get you anywhere and i've i've explained this to a lot of people that have asked me how should you train? I, and I told him, well, it depends. It depends how the training session is actually going to go down. How are you, how are you going to train? Are you going to train with intensity? Or are you just going to go through the motions? So there's a big difference, right? I could give, you know, let's say I have two people in front of me. One works out with intensity. And one works out just by going through the motions. If I give the one that works out with intensity, the same split, as the person that works out just to maintain muscle, the person with intensity is gonna grow, but the person that obviously is not pushing with intensity isn't gonna grow. Even though they're the same exact workouts, one person's gonna grow whilst the other person isn't gonna grow. So it's all about the intensity and you have to cycle through it, right? And the way I would cycle through it, like I said, is, you know, go through, anywhere from five to eight weeks. After five to eight weeks, take a deload week. And during those five to eight weeks, how I set up my training split is I go 
three days on, one day off. Three days on, one day off. That way I give my body enough time to recover. Some people go six times or six consecutive days in a row. So the thing about that, you're not giving your body a chance to recover, right? You're going one, two, three, four, five, six days. And you're just, you know, when you start to get to day four, five, six, you really start to feel like you're just going through the motions. You're tired. You just, motivation is low. Uh, you know, it just, you feel ill sometimes. So even the pump is so bad. So that's my advice for avoiding these training mistakes and, you know, also just highlighting, okay, what are the big training mistakes? What are the things that people tend to do a lot? Uh, and, you know, like I said, how to avoid them because ultimately at the end of the day, you want to put on muscle and there's a fine line between training hard and, or excuse me, there's a fine line between not training and training hard, right? Obviously you want to find that balance in the middle, right? You want to train hard, but you also want to be able to recover at the end of the day. So make sure you just balance your recovery and your training so that way you can maximize the amount of muscle you can put on your body. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you haven't clicked that like button, please click that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.